right, 21 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You know, I forget a lot of stuff, but I got a good memory when it comes to some of the teachers that I had uh, in the course of my lifetime. And, and I, I don't know, if I had been a teacher and I found out years and years and years later that uh, some of my students remembered me, I would say, gosh, I must have been a pretty good teacher. And the teachers that I remember, definitely, uh, if I've ever mentioned you on the air, if you happen to be in the area, I... I have nothing but good things to say about you. There was a, a lady who was a teacher whose daughter was on Facebook, and uh, her mom, who had been my teacher, was uh, kind of put up a note that her mom was sick and wondered if any of the former students were still around. And so somehow it got to me, and I wrote a little note saying, oh, my gosh, yes, I remember Mrs. Schechter, and, and she was so great. And, and then, uh, then I guess about six months later, she posted that she had died. But it it was that connection, it was that acknowledgement that, yes, what you did with your life really, really did make a difference in the lives of others, M myself being one of many, many people who benefited from that work and that dedication. Linda Darling-Hammond and, and Desiree Carver-Thomas are on the phone. They're going to talk to us about the findings from the teacher turnover report. Uh, Linda Darling-Hammond is the president and CEO of the Learning Policy Institute, and she's an award-winning writer. And Desiree Carver-Thomas is the research and policy associate of the educator quality team at the Learning Policy Institute, also is an author. Good morning, ladies. How are you both? We're well. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Where are you together? Where are you? <laughs> we are on different phones. <laughs> in and where in different places what states are you in are you in, the, in california oh my gosh well thank you for getting up early to be with us this morning our, our pleasure. pleasure so here in in our community i would like to tell you that we have a really good public uh school system but you know the the show that we do it we kind of um privy to some of the best students in our community so because good students who get awards and stuff usually end up on talk shows in, in a community. So we'll see the, the best of the best, that whether they're from public schools, private schools, or even the homeschool kids. And I don't have an opinion about which is better. <laughs> because to me, I see the best of the best, so they all seem like they're, they're doing well. D did the turnover report give you any indication uh, that would serve the rest of us who, who need to know what's going on in the school systems? Well, I think so. Teacher turnover is a serious issue all across the country. Um, so, and this is teachers who are leaving uh, the profession and leaving their schools. About 16% of teachers each year, uh, which is higher than in a lot of other countries um, that are high performing, like Finland and uh, Singapore and Ontario, Canada. So this is a serious issue all across the country. Oh, um, in all, all right. kinds of schools. And, and do we have, a, 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 is it different from state to state, or, or is this, this is something that we need to do at a, at a national level? Yeah, it does vary quite a bit from state to state. We know that in the South, those, uh, that's where we see the highest turnover rates, uh, about 17%, and that's about double the turnover rates we see in the Northeast. Is it the so, wages? Um, it's especially wages. acute. I'm sorry? I, I, I'm, I apologize for talking over you. There's a little delay, and I didn't mean to do that. Is, is it because of the wages? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, wages is a part of it. Uh, teachers who, um, you know, are in districts with, with higher uh, salaries tend to uh, have lower turnover rates. Um, but there are also um, uh, teachers cite things like dissatisfaction with testing and accountability measures and lack of administrative support, dissatisfaction with working conditions, yeah. um, teachers who are less well-prepared are more likely to leave their, their schools. Um, so there, there are quite a few reasons why teachers leave. Do the teachers of today have the freedom to use their, their kind of creative, in, their intuitive instincts when it comes to teaching students, or are they all kind of bound by curriculums handed down by the state? You know, that really does vary from state to state. Um, the amount of top-down prescription will differ, uh, but teachers really value that autonomy and that opportunity to be creative. Uh, you know, they don't mind having some guidance about what kids should cover in a year, but to personalize it for your own students so that you can really get them excited and draw them in and build on their experiences is an important part of being an effective teacher. So you need the room to be able to do that. 
Um, it, as far as the the uh, results of the study, did it um, did it address the the needs of the students, the needs of the teachers, or both? Um, well, well the study looked. Go ahead, Desiree. Go ahead. We looked at uh, different student groups as well as different groups of teachers. So uh, we found that, for example, uh, math and science teachers and special education teachers and uh, foreign language teachers, English language development teachers, these are all um, tend to have higher turnover rates. So that's on the teacher side as well as, you know, teachers who are underprepared. Um, and then in terms of students, we saw that uh, students in, uh, you know, Teachers in schools serving low-income students and uh, majority students of color um, tend to have higher turnover rates as well. Um, so, so it's a little bit of both. Really? So what do we do? How do we fix the problem? Well, there are, there are a lot things of things that... We... Go ahead, Desiree. Um, so there are a few things. One thing is paying for teachers' education uh, in return for their service um, so that teachers are incentivized to come into the field, but also incentivized to come in through high retention pathways, high quality programs that can help them to be effective and, and successful in the classroom and to want to stay in their schools. Um, the other thing is uh, improving school leadership. You know, states can invest in, um, in programs that help to uh, support principals so that they can create the kinds of environments that teachers want to continue to teach in. Um, and finally, is just improving compensation. You know, we know that teachers don't come into the profession uh, because of the pay, but, you know, making sure that they're able to support uh, their families and themselves. Yeah, I, I, I know each state is different. In, in our state, one of the complaints you hear is that we have um, money issues, and it's, it sounds like there doesn't need to be a money issue because we have a state lottery that's supposed to support the education system. I guess we'll leave that. I guess that's out of your realm, but we'll have to leave that up to our legislators. Um, so let me ask you if we could leave the listeners with a website for more information about maybe the Learning Policy Institute. Sure. Our website is learningpolicyinstitute.org. That was easy enough. <laughs> that was easy. Okay. Uh, well, ladies, thank you for being on the air with us. Are either of you teachers? We were both, both of us have been teachers. teachers. Both of us have been <laughs> teachers. Okay. Well, thank you for your work as teachers. As I mentioned in my intro, I, I can name the teachers that I had uh, throughout pretty much all of my schooling, and there's probably not one that, that didn't help me become a better person in one way or another. Uh, Linda Darling Hammond, Desiree Carver Thomas, thank you both. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank we'll, you. We'll be right back. News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. Making history disappear in Baltimore while hoping to avoid a repeat of what happened in Charlottesville. Four Confederate statues here in the city of Baltimore have been removed overnight in the cover of darkness. Uh, the first one uh, was Roger Taney, Supreme Court Justice. That was taken down. Then Stonewall and Lee uh, were taken down around 4 o'clock this morning. The Confederate Woman of Maryland statue came down just before the sun came up. On a jolly hemp hill of Fox affiliate WTTG Boston, the Confederate Soldiers and Sailors Monument also came down, remembering Elvis, who died 40 years ago today. It was part somber ritual, part family reunion for fans who gathered to remember where they were when they heard about the death of the king of rock and roll. And everything just really went quiet. Yeah, yeah. It went quiet. And you're going, what did we just hear? Graceland officials.